What is going on, YouTube? Oh, baby, we are back. Tony, welcome back. Hello, hello. It's been a while. It has been a while. Uh, I was just asking you before we started the video, are, are you ready for this? Uh, well, it's been a long while, so I guess uh, well, let's find out. In today's video, Tony, actually, Tony, you know, I'm going to let you take over, but he's going to be showing off one of his favorite decks, which is Dogmatic. Yeah, so one of the decks I built and I've enjoyed probably since the beginning of Return of the Duelist has been Dogmatica. From the idea that it started off as an anti-extra deck mechanic to then something that focused on rituals, the deck actually has a lot of cool plays. Sadly, a lot of it is kind of overshadowed by the fact that the first wave support was just so an engine good. on its own, but I do want to focus on the fact that since this last wave, uh, this last core set in Sayak, we have all the pieces to build a really powerful ritual deck out of it. So let's break it down. For you. First thing I want to say just before we get into it is we were testing before we started filming this. He extra ripped me, like he extra deck ripped me for nine, no, for seven game one, and then for like ten game two. Yes, that's crazy. All right, all right, let's get into it. So starting off, we uh, you all know this is coming, but we still have the three. Dogmatic Ecclesia, two Dogmatic Maxis, and one Dogmatic for the lead. This is the core engine that will probably never change till the end of time, minus a few variations. All of them have some effect where if you can either, if there's an extract monster for these two, you can special themselves to the field, or with this one, you can banish a monster, a Synchro, Exceeds, Link, or Fusion monster from your graveyard to summon it. So they all have a way to like burn extract monsters out. They all have great consistency effects too. Uh, Ecclesia on Summon Search for any Dogmatic card. This is Stratos, a Searcher. It also can be destroyed by Battle by Extract Monsters. Don't know how relevant that is right now with Cash Deer lying around, but it is actually decent. Um, for the least, can special summon itself, and when it does so, if you control another dogmatic monster, negates the effects of a monster on the field. This doesn't target, so it's used more as a kind of hand trap of sorts. Maximus here is a little more interesting. See, Maximus, once per turn, can allow force both players to send two monsters from their extract to the graveyard. Their choice? Well, yours has to be unique, theirs does not. This can be used to send things from your extract that plus you, but a lot of times for your opponent, this is going to be actually detrimental because it's taking pieces out of their deck. It becomes a little more relevant, however, when you combine this with other extract red cards that start taking larger chunks out of their deck, forcing them to eventually start taking out real options. And you're going to be using this not only as a way to damage your opponent, but you're going to be using this to send cards like Herald of Arclight to actually start facilitating a ritual strategy. Previously in other deck lists, if you still somehow go back to my channel, you'll find that I play more Fleur de Lis. The reason that this has changed is because this card is less a center focus of a central engine, more as a hand trap that you have to protect your rituals. So this is the part that you want to focus on more. Continuing on to the actual rituals, we have the one uh, white relic of the uh, Dogmatica, and then the Albazoa uh, Dogmatica. So. The, the White Relic is less relevant here. On summons, he targets a monster, two monsters, and then gives one the attack of the other, cool for battle shenanigans, and prevents your level 8 or higher dogmatic from, from being destroyed by battle, which can come up. But the more relevant part, well, monster here is the Albazo. Albazo is a level 12 ritual monster with 4k attack and 4k events. That is a not a jokeable number. That's beefy. That is a big number. On top of that, he grants uh, effect uh, activated effect immunity to all your Dogmaticas from the effects of Synchros, Xyz, Links, and Fusions. That's not monster summon from the extra deck like the previous group said. This is from any Synchro, Xyz, Link, or Fusion monster, no matter where they come from. And as a result of that, it means that not only does it provide protection for a 4k body, all these ones become unaffected as well, making your board essentially hexproof. At the same time, the more relevant effect is once per turn, you can uh, force your opponent to do one of two things. Either A, they bounce every extract monster they control, uh, fusion, synchro, exceeds, or link monster back to their extract, or you force them to send monsters, uh, uh, cards from their hand or extract to the graveyard equal to every two cards in their extract. So essentially, because you're going to be going first, they're never going to be bouncing cards back. Because they can't bounce anything back. So it's always going to be a rip seven. Yes. In other words, if there's 15 cards in their extract, they're going to be forced to send seven cards from somewhere. And in in a game where hand advantage, you're assuming they're going to be sending seven from the extra deck. And that's a sizable amount. And then when you combine it with things like Maximus, we're now talking about nine. And we don't even stop there. So this is both effect immunity, this is also extra deck ripping, and it's also a 4k body. And the fact that it's level 12 also becomes extremely relevant when we get to later pieces. Okay. From there, we also have the one Saveris. You do play a lot of cards that do search for light rituals. This is a way to protect your Albazo from things that unfortunately aren't extra deck monsters. If you play this against Kashtira, you would know the pain of losing this to a Fenrir. Yeah. Or in our last matchup, losing it to a Plasma. 
Yeah, uh, yeah, I was playing Herald. I'm sorry. Apologies. From there, we have the three Diviner of Herald. Diviner of Herald, obviously a fantastic card because it's one, on, on normal summon, sends any fairy, which is your Herald of Arclight. Two, conveniently enough, it's under 500 attack as level two, so it can be linked away to make an Almirage. And because now you have an extra deck monster, it opens up the effects of Ecclesia to special summon itself. This means this alongside Ecclesia, or in this case of this, linking away this into then something like a Cyber's Garden if you're playing it, allows you to access to both your Maximus and your Ecclesia to get two searches off, which gets you both pieces of your ritual engine. Nice. Likewise, there are some weird things where I was testing where you could also bring this back and then synchro with a level eight to make Barone, but that, that didn't work out. No, <laughs> I, I'm, I would not advise against that. And to just up the ante on extract dumping, we do play the one Gale Dogmas. Oh, nice. Life points is meaningless yeah. when you get your setup. At the end of the day, this is a way to do so. And it also can be made in Almirage. From there, we then have the one Blazing Cartesia the Virtuous. So you may see this card in Branded, and that's usually to make Grand Gulam. In this deck, it works the same way. Uh, how we accessing it though, I'll show you later. But this card is actually used to make a play on your opponent's turn. See, while a lot of your dogmatic monsters lock you out of your extra deck on the turn you activate their effects, that's little to be said about making extra deck monsters on the next turn. And as a result, we're going to be using a lot of quick effects to do extra deck plays on our opponent's turn to supplement the fact that we can't access them on our turn. Okay. One of them being Cartesia's quick effects. Likewise, if you dump fusion from your extra deck graveyard, you can add it back and that lets you use ritual fodder, but this one play alone has a lot of off. Then for hand traps, we have the three Ash, the three Veiler, the Veiler obviously protecting the Abazoa, the Ash because Ash. Yep, of course. And then moving on to the spells, we of course still have the three, uh, Nidir's Servant. Nidir's Servant sends any monster from the extra grave to add any dogmatic of with an attack uh, less or equal to that monster. You are playing a fair number of high attack monsters to search for, and a lot of them will effectively get you the main piece, which is your Ecclesia, alongside one of the plus. There are combos where you can send a Herald of Arclight to search for specifically a uh, White Relic, and that gets you another ritual piece as well. But this is more actually the reason why it's in there, because you need something that can you can send Herald with that will then let you search for ritual pieces. Okay. Aside from that, Fantastic Card is also a board breaker if you decide to send something like Entis as well. Yep. Uh, then we have another new card that I didn't uh, have mentioned before, Dogmatic Matrix. So this card is innocuously powerful. On activation, it searches for any Dogmatic ritual piece, ritual spell or ritual monster. Fantastic there. What is interesting though is if your opponent controls a monster, however, you then also get to search for any Dogmatica monster in general. So this is a searcher that goes on first, making grabs you ritual pieces, going second grabs you that and a Dogmatica play. Furthermore, if you do control a ritual Dogmatica monster, you can then look at either player's X deck and send a card from it. So this is another way to rip your opponent's extra deck, but it's also a way to then send things from your extra deck to the graveyard as well to then set up plays also. And this effect is not a hard once per turn. It's per copy. And as a continuous spell, that means that you, the more copies you accrue onto the field, the more extra deck ripping you get to do. That's crazy. Turn one, you start with one. Then if you have a way to search into another one, turn two and three, you're ripping more cards out of a rep extra decks. And that can get very aggressive very quickly. Then we have three Dogmatic Calamity. This is, uh, this is essentially... Dog, um, what's the card? Necroz, uh, Clydomir. Clydomir, yeah. Dogmaticus. It sends you any, to summon any Dogmatic Ritual monster, you send a monster from your hand or field, or a monster from your extra deck whose level exactly equals that of the monster you're summoning, summons it. Uh, conveniently, this means that this is a one card way to summon out Dogmatic Albazoa using a monster that will become relevant in our extra deck when we explore it. We have the one Dogmatic and Macabre. This is the Necroz Mirror of the Dogmaticus. Let you Ritual Summon from your hand or grave using mo monsters from your field or synchro fusion monsters from your graveyard. By the way, you're dumping cards, you'll probably have the material to bring back an Albazo this way, but it's also kind of quickly, funny enough, it also mentions um, White Relic, which means that you could pre-prep this and White Relic into your hand. Oh, nice. Uh, this is more of a recovery play. At the end of the day, this is the main one that you want to play because this is just a one card ritual. This one requires greater setup. From there, we then have a bunch of one-as. We'll have the one pre-preparation rights, as I just mentioned. You could choose reveal this and White uh, Relic to get both. You have the one extra deck, uh, Foolish Burial. This is a card that is just Gale Dogra, but the only difference is you could always activate it. We have the one Ritual Sanctuary, which lets us send any of these dead spells that we may have in our hand if we open multiple to search for any light ritual monster or ritual spell, which converts searches all our dogmatic monsters, but also the Sauveris if we need it. Uh, it also has that second effect. You can shuffle back spells back in your deck to summon a fairy from your grave. This is where I thought I could summon back the level two uh, Herald to make her own. Yeah. But realistically, you could just do it just to shuffle back the dear servants and have an infinitely recurring loop. Okay. Then we have one duality. Uh, this is something I'm still messing around with. Duality lets you target tr and tribute any light or dark monster to summon a light or dark monster from your extra deck or your hand with the same level, but the, uh, the same type and or 
with the same level and attribute, a type, but a different attribute. So if you sack a light, you summon a dark. In this case, because there's spell casters that are light, you can sack it to summon dragoons. Granted, I don't know how much this is comes up, but I will further testing, I'd say this is actually not a bad card. It also has a graveyard effect that lets you banish it to target a light and dark in your graveyard and put them back in your deck to draw one, which lets you reuse your extra deck, but also reuse your dark benefits. I ain't gonna draw. I ain't gonna draw, yeah. Uh, then from there, we have some going second cards, kinda. We have two triple attack and one triple attack that's thrust. Uh, obviously, when your opponent activates an effect, you get to play these. What's really cool is that you may notice a lot of monsters in a lot of modern meta deck games have a monster that they can send from their extra deck that will trigger an effect. Which means when you out Bazoa, your opponent may actually trigger an effect on your turn one. And this means that these are live immediately. This is a way to get uh, almost as a gotcha moment for your opponent. Where your opponent thinks they're plussing off of your effect, and then you just hit them harder. Yep. From there, we have the one terraforming to search into the ritual sanctuary. The one ultimate uh, slayer, because you, it's also a way to send cards from your extra to the graveyard to get rid of monsters. And the one uh, foolish bear of goods to negate a hand trap. So one thing I want to point out, however, with something like ultimate slayer is that you, I'm not playing Xyz monster. So unfortunately you may have to consider that, but it is still removal nonetheless. Yep. It is a great card going second. Yep. Anyway, going into the extra deck, we start off with the most important one here and Despian Luluwell. I'm pretty sure I pronounced that wrong. Lulu Wallet. Despian woman. This person. Yes. Lulu Wallet is a 2500 dark syn uh, light synchro monster. That's a spellcaster. So there's some synergies there. But the more important part, it's a level 12, which makes it exactly the same level as the uh, Albazoa to be sent off a dogmatic calamity to summon Albazoa. And conveniently enough, it has a graveyard effect. First off, well, it's in, when it's in, on the end of phase of the turn, it's sent to the graveyard, like a lot of the Albas seasons. You can summon a spellcaster from your deck that is the same attack and defense. Now, there's a few targets for this. Obviously, you can summon out your Dogmatic Ecclesia. You can also summon out your Fleur de Lis. Uh, don't know why you would. It's damage, I guess. But the most important target for your deck in this case will be your Blazing Cartesia. Using Dogmatic Calamity to summon out Abazo essentially gets you the Blazing Cartesia onto the field. And that gives you a quick effect fusion on your opponent's turn. That is essentially two forms of interaction there. Okay. Uh, furthermore, uh, funny enough, you can summon this, and I'll get into how, but it has an effect on the field where if you're, a monster leaves your opponent's extra deck, i.e. by the extra deck rip, or if they just summon a monster, uh, you target a monster on the field, negate its effects, then permanently pump your field by 500. Nice. So, it is just a beefy per, uh, creature that you will get out, which is why we're playing two. We have two Malong. Uh, Malong, you'll never summon, but the relevant part is if it's sent to the graveyard, you bounce a card on a face-up card on the field, which really useful there it's just the removal with like uh, the deers and stuff yeah yes uh the relevant part also it's a level six why uh, we'll get to that later okay then we have the three herald of arc light this is your ritual searcher every card will send us to the grave and you will search your pieces as you need them we have the one entis as another way to pop cards if it's sent from the extra deck to the graveyard we have the one gale uh garura which is just a draw so essentially your uh, nadir servant goes plus two and then we have the titan clad which is uh end phase effect lets you uh, bring out a Dogmatica, it's your hand or your field. This is a way to grab a Florida Lease on the end phase for protection. All right. And then we have the Grand Ghoulin. This is the card you'll be summoning by uh, through Grand Cartesia's effect. It requires car Grand car uh, Red Cartesia or Blazing Cartesia and any light monster, which is an entire deck. And on summon, it sends a light level six or higher light monster from your deck, or as a lot of people haven't noticed, your extra deck. Which means in this case, you can also on your opponent's turn send them along a bouncer card. Oh, okay. Or if you don't have, there's nothing on the field, which sums up, you just send Guru and draw a card. This is a quick, um, just a quick be, uh, value engine. Yep. What's more, however, is that when your opponent would activate a mon or summon a monster from their deck using a monster effect, you can banish this card from the field or graveyard to summon out a Despian monster from your extra deck, i.e. Despian Lulu Wall. So essentially, you go into Lulu Wall to summon Cartesia, Cartesia goes into this, and then this goes back into this. And since we have duality, and this is for some reason a light spellcaster, you can send this for duality as well to summon out the red dragoon and then banish it from the graveyard to summon the wall. And combined with the Albazoa, this puts well over 8k damage on board. And you have a negate. You have two negates. You have two negates. And since again, if a fusion went to the grave this way, this goes back to hand. So this is just a fantastic value engine that you're essentially going to be doing that leaves you with full of options and your opponent with no options that you're ripping all of them out of their extra. That's nice. And then from there, you may notice, uh, this, I think this is uh, only about 12 extra monsters. We have the one Al Mirage as well as the one Tribe Gay Fair G. This is a way you can send something off of Garura or instead of Garura because it draws you one but also bottom decks one so in case you open pieces that you needed to put in high searches to 
you put this at the bottom instead of playing the Karuda. And that's, I think, 14, 14 cards in extra deck, yeah. Right, uh, the so last card should be Cyber Skarna, but I like 14. Okay, so if anyone doesn't know, if anyone's new to the channel, just because Tony hasn't been here in a while, um, that's his thing. He likes to play 14. I always forget the 15 card, and I always think I don't need it. You'll never need the 15 card. Yeah. Stay at 14, Tony. Yeah. So, uh, I guess from here, I guess we'll go into the very basic combo of how you're, you're playing against your opponent. Sure. Uh, what you need in this case, let's say, uh, to really start things off, is any Dogmatica piece and Dogmatica Matrix. Yep. Or any access to any of these cards, which is a plethora of ways. Yep. The, uh, and then this is how it's going to work. Let's say you open, in this case, the Alba Zone. Sure. You can activate the Dogmatic Matrix. Uh, Matrix to grab you the ritual spell. You activate the ritual spell and that lets you send a monster from your extra deck who equals a level Albazoa. You're gonna send a little wallet. That will summon the Albazoa. From there, you can activate Dogmatica Matrix's effect, which will let you send a extra deck monster from either player's grave. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna choose mine and I'm going to send a Titan Clap. Then, I'm going to activate Albazoa's effect and we're gonna rip seven. So now that's seven options your opponent has now to give up. Yep. Uh, alternatively, they, I guess if you went second, you bounced the field. I don't know. Yeah. Um, then we, the most important part now is we go to the end phase. On the end phase, two things will trick. We have the Titan Clad and the Luol. We'll trigger the Titan Clad first. We'll summon out the uh, Ecclesia. We'll use our Ecclesia's effect to Bro, grab Cordelie. Then we'll activate the effect of the Lulu Wallet in our graveyard, and we'll use that to summon Blazing Cartesia. And that's our board. Simplistically, you offer two cards for the turn. So you have a negate. We have no, we don't have negate yet. This can only summon itself while we have an extract monster. Yeah. But that shouldn't be that hard. On our opponent's turn, at any point, we can activate uh, Blazing Cartesia's effect to fusion summon with the uh, Ecclesia on our hand and, uh, or the Ecclesia on field and this. And this will summon out our Grand Guigonal. Now we have a negate. Grand, now we have a uh, negate because we now have an extract monster. But Grand Guigonal on summon then will then allow me to send um, along the bounce card. That's one disruption. And at any point, we can also have a negate. But if our opponent decides to extend, however, we can then proceed to banish the Grand Guignol directly from our field, if we didn't open the duality, to go into Lulu Wallet. And Lulu Wallet means that they attempt to still go into the exec. That is a third negate. That's three negates on our field. That's all accounting the fact that your opponent still has to out the 4K body, a 25 card uh, K body, and both are unaffected by the effects of extra deck monsters. And seven cards are out of their extra deck. So assuming they can't really get their extra deck plays going because they've lost half of it at this point, it becomes a lot more difficult to just know. Yeah. And I want to understand, like, again, you can't, it's not, this is not a board where you can go, like, I can make a Zeus and out this because you can Zeus everything but these two. And if you Zeus this, this will float. Yeah. And we'll just be back where we started. This will go to the grave. This will summon out an Ecclesia. And from the Ecclesia, we'll just rebuild the board. Ecclesia will go. Oh, and, and, and then from the Ecclesia, we can just grab another Dogmatic Matrix. The only difference now is if I activate this Dogmatic Matrix and you control a my opponent controls a monster, I'm searching two cards. And this is still having kept five cards or uh, four cards in hand. If that's a hand trap, we're a golden. Let's go. Yo, this deck's fun. This deck is very cool. Again, obviously, I think there are some limitations. Against Kash Tira, you're really kind of trying to play around the uh, fan mirror as hard as you possibly can yeah uh against heroes of all things plasma plasma ends your life sorry again this is like this is why we're playing things like the florida lee and the uh Sauveris. it's ways to protect your board against things like that you also and, play the hand traps right? and the hand traps as well and it's 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 suitable enough i think at the end of the day the only thing that really limits this deck from being a lot more playable is that the ceiling of some of these decks are higher and the fact that some decks Make things that you just lose. Like, you just do not have a good cash tier matchup. You will not be able to not only out the Fenrir, but you also don't have a way to out the uh, Arise Heart if they go first. Yeah. And when you can't send anything from your extra the game. Yeah. But all, right. all in all, great deck, worth playing. Uh, another one of the things I've been messing around with in my long absence. Long absence, but he's still he's still on the grind. Tony, we miss you. We want you to come back. Uh, I, I have my reasons for why I have uh, haven't been uploading for a long time. And one day when I get back to the channel, I think I'll tell, talk about them. But for now, I think I'm content just giving you the content. Good. I'm happy. I'm happy you're back. Thank you guys all for watching. I hope you guys did enjoy. Make sure to like and subscribe if you guys haven't already. <laughs> On top of that, I know he's not uploading right now, but if you guys want to check out his channel, a link will be in the description below so you guys can check that out. Thank you guys all for watching. Thank you, Tony, for being on here. And with that, Spanko and Tony signing out. Peace.